it was supposed to cut this one. Hey guys, this is Bill with Hangar Rats again, and we are working on the Faux Fighter. Now, I got to tell you, I was, uh, I've been busy. We've been uh, doing a bunch of stuff the last uh, couple weeks, so we are uh, kind of, I, I, I got to apologize for not getting back to you guys with a video update on this thing. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing more stripping on the uh, fuselage here, get this thing done. You've seen stripping last time, so we're paint stripping last time, so we're not going to dwell on that too much. So biggest thing we're going to try to do is get everything from here down stripped, but we're going to take a hit at it. And with as hot as it is and all that, we try to do this in the morning in the shade and all that. So until we get a uh, a uh, bay that we can do full-time stripping, we're just, uh, we kind of have to do it in the uh, in the shade outside. So that's kind of what we're doing. Had some other folks ask about the, uh, what stripper we use. We use a, uh, actually we use a Eldorado uh, PR3500 methylene chloride stripper. It's good stuff. It's mil spec certified. It's Boeing approved. Uh, you get some folks that get all wiggly about that, but it's Boeing approved. The product line has just been sold to another company, and I'll put that information below. This is the real deal. This stuff will strip paint. The eco stuff that's out there nowadays, nothing against saving trees and, and all that stuff, but you end up using five times as much and making more of a environmental hazard so i'm not i'm not about that so this stuff works first time uh typically anytime you're stripping paint what i tell folks is when you're putting the stripper on you'll normally get about 90 percent 90 percent of what you put the stripper on the second coat will get 90 percent of that 10 percent that's left the third coat will get the 90 percent and it's just you're going to have to keep nibbling at it but after a while you're just spotting put a couple little bits on it so it does take a little while this aircraft is particularly hard to do in that we've got the uh, we've got the original lacquer under here, which just turns to goo, uh, and then we've got some uh, well, there's some wash primer type stuff that was poorly applied. That's coming off in other areas. Uh, the side area you can see how thick it is here. That has an enamel, so we've got lacquer, then enamel, then we've got urethane white and urethane blue on top of it. So we got a whole crap ton of paint that we're trying to get off so that's some of the problems you get into with some of these older aircraft but again we want to keep the weight down and all that so that's kind of what's going on there so that's what we're going to be doing today uh, I'll uh, I'm not going to bother you with that but uh, we're going to go over to the workbench outside we've got some uh, stuff that's uh, we'll tell you about what's going on here so here we go okay so we're over here uh, we're kind of doing some uh Got our outside stripping table, but um, for piece parts and all that, but kind of give you an update on what's going on. Last episode, if you remember, we had a lift strut that had a big dent in it. Um, we're going to check that out. Uh, so what we were able to do in last week, actually a week and a half ago, I guess now it is, we um, went over to Air Salvage of Dallas. It's uh, one of our local uh, reclamation yards. They also do crash investigation. Um, they do... Uh, <clears throat> evidence storage and all that great folks over there so we went over there and lucky set us up with um a uh used serviceable lift strut that will replace this lift strut that's dented uh in addition to that uh we got the set of steps so we're going to put the steps on just like a t41 or you've seen it on 150s and 172 servicing steps and then also servicing handles that go up on the counter sort of look just like a t41 would have so We've got another strut. We're going to have to strip the paint off of it and inspect it, but right now it looks pretty good. Looks like somebody had put some tape on the leading edge, so that's our plan there. That's what's going there. Instruments, we had some folks asking about instruments and all that. What we're planning on doing is, uh, this is the original instrument panel out of the aircraft. You can see it's got kind of a bend to it. And the concept there was, back in the time, is your navigation heads would be down low, and then they'd be canted so you can see them. The actual substructure of the aircraft is flat so we're going to put this make this go flat again it is our hope that what we like to do is in these two holes here is put something similar to a g5 type instrument so it'll be here and we can have our nav indication coming off of a gps over here so that's that's our hope right there um, <clears throat> as far as the rest of the six pack uh, this aircraft you can see it's got a big hole here and a big hole here this originally had a big i think it was actually a uh, 
it wasn't three and an eighth. It was bigger, like three and a quarter or something like that. Or no, I take it back. It was, I think, just a three-inch hole. And then this was, this was made larger when they put a newer gyro in. <clears throat> so anyway, it's kind of, you look at it, it's kind of wibbly wobbly. So we'll make a new panel all flat and, and uh, reset this. But then the other thing we'll do is we have our control yoke right here. We'll try to get this straightened up a bit. This is off to a side because the original gyro was held in by these four bolt holes. Big old dinosaur gyro. Vacuum powered. So uh, that was vacuum powered. The <clears throat> uh, DG was vacuum powered. And then the turn coordinator on this aircraft is electric. So that's how Cessna separated systems. That if you had a fail of a vacuum pump, then you would still have an electric turn coordinator. And you could do needle ball airspeed and still keep the aircraft level and stay alive. So that was the deal there. If this went out, you'd still have your horizon vacuum system and all that. So single order failure and you can get that fixed. So what we're going to do is we want to get rid of the vacuum system altogether. So we're going to get rid of our um, going to get rid of our vacuum DG. See this is vacuum here. Our vacuum DG. Um, our turn coordinator. This is a later installation turn coordinator. That is a um, that's electric and we're going to keep that. We also have a backup turn uh, turn and bank. Uh, electric turn and bank in case we uh, in case this doesn't work, we're going to have to send them out and make sure they're okay. So these two gauges will end up going away. We'll end up keeping the VSI, vertical speed indicator, altimeter, airspeed, and then again the turn coordinator. This will be electric on ship's power. Uh, if we put two G5s in, they have electric backup of their own. So now by doing that and getting rid of any users of a vacuum system, um, we can get rid of the vacuum pump. So we get rid of the vacuum pump, we get rid of the heavier gyro instruments here, we get rid of the hosing, the relief valve, all that stuff. And then we also get, um, so we're gonna get the weight savings from that. Uh, these indicators here will end up going away. We'll actually probably have extra space on the panel now that the some of the course indicators can actually overlay into a G5 type of product. That's kind of our plan. Uh, we don't have any G5s, but that's our plan. So we, on that note, we've got the GoFundMe. So hey, throw some money in there. We've got Patreon, we've got, um, what else have we got? Patreon, GoFundMe, and now there's a YouTube thing. I, I talked to you about a little bit on that where you can throw some money at it. So it's slow going. Um, again, the folks at Air Salvage of Dallas, they gave us a real good deal here. Uh, we got these, um, Lucky really, really did a good job. I cannot say enough about those guys. They also have a summer sale and a winter sale. It's a great flying event, so fun stuff there. So I highly recommend. If you need some parts, um, you know, lightly, <laughs> lightly experienced parts, uh, get hold of them if you need anything. Um, they've got quite a supply of stuff from the aircraft they're breaking. So, uh, so anyway, that's something about what you can still add to leave some money at his doorstep. So uh, again, we're using, we're kind of using our, our money about as fast as we get it. Um, so anyway, that's what's going on here. We're gonna end up with a new instrument panel um, and then to be determined on some of this stuff. We'll keep the clock and all that. If you guys have any comments as to what we should put in, we're gonna have the, as I said, the airspeed turn coordinator and then the uh, altimeter vertical speed and then we're gonna have our two uh, G5 275 something type gauges. I don't want to go with an AV30 because they're kind of a dumb gauge um, and we can't really portray any navigation information. So uh, that's my goal. This is way down the road, but this is some of the work we've done. I actually took this panel out. It was corroded. We cleaned it up. Uh, this is actually a magnesium. That's how, how uh, what they were using back in the day. But uh, this has all been cleaned up and we'll just use it now. Uh, in retrospect, we'll just use it for a pattern. So that's what's going on there. So that's what's happening on that. That's what's happening on the strut. Um, and for more fun and games, what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna go and investigate this, this old blue strut and see what the inside looks like. I told you that there was a dent and it was not looking too good, but I wanna take a look at the inside. Now we can bore scope it and all that, but this, as far as I'm concerned, this strut is never gonna see the light of day again. So I have an inspection tool. <clears throat> the saw's all. So, here we go.
now you can see the dent from the inside again that's not something that you can hammer out or straighten up it's uh this is a lift strut i don't want anybody dying uh it could cause a crack early later in its life so that's the reason we cut it up but there's a there's a dent that somebody filled with bondo and we're not going to have any of that so that's our deal there that's the dent that killed this strut so we can make uh, something out of this cut it cut the, we'll cut the rest of it off maybe make a Maybe we can make a, uh, I don't know, mailbox stand or something out of it. But it's not going to be an aircraft part. So I'm kind of glad that we did that. Nobody will be, be able to use this on a Cessna 172 anymore. So it's a good thing. And uh, that's about it for this episode. Um, so next time what we're doing is we're going to be stripping the good lift struts. We're going to get those all stripped. Um, Aladine primed and I'll bring you in on that process. I'm gonna try to get this stuff done today before it gets too hot It's been getting uh, about 100 degrees triple digits in Texas here. I'm not sure what that is centigrade, but uh, it's getting hot it's starting to be the hot season um, What we're gonna do on the good lift strut is we're gonna uh, the one we just got from air salvage We are going to get that stripped and the other lift strut, which is good We're gonna get that stripped Aladine and then prime it paint it um, the other thing we had to do is we're going to put those steps on there and there's actually on the army aircraft there's some stencils on where to put that step so we have that information i'll show you how to properly put a vinyl uh, stencil on we've got those all made they're inside the shop uh and then those will be done so hey bill why aren't you tearing up a bunch of other stuff taking a bunch of other things off one step at a time so we're taking these apart or cleaning them scrubbing them uh, that'll be all the step details uh, and the handle details getting them all done and then they'll be painted bag tagged and put up so that when it comes time to put the aircraft together if we have the fuselage ready to go and we have the wings ready to go we don't have to wait to do the lift struts so those pieces and parts are done so you're gonna see kind of a reverse of what a lot of folks do they typically take an aircraft all the way apart and not necessarily the best thing to do be doing I'm in the shade here now it might be a little dark i'll try to brighten it up on post-production but it is uh the reason is is because it's freaking hot out so that's why i'm in the shade we've got the shop uh we're gonna work on that um we've been doing some stuff on it so hopefully we'll get in there shortly um so that's what's going on but again on a pro any project don't take the whole thing apart take a piece apart clean it scrub it put it back together now you also see in this project we are going to do the engine last the engine is the last thing we are going to need to go fly typically lead time on a lot of our machine parts uh getting some of that work done used to be a month or two now it's up to about three months but we'll send that stuff out but that doesn't have to be done until we're about three or four months out from the end so we're in okay shape there uh the other thing is battery there's no reason to worry about battery the, the radios we've got uh we're going to put pretty much uh, probably some legacy radios in unless somebody comes up with some good stuff for us uh, we were able to have uh, again some stuff is coming in uh, our friend tony gave us the um that extra turn and bank just in case our first one falls out so that'll be a good thing if that if the first one is good then we'll sell it and put those parts or that money toward some more parts so that's kind of the plan there but the biggest thing is there we're not really we know that we think a g5 will probably work there might be a better thing that will come out between now and when we get the panel done but as far as any project aircraft project worry about the engine and the avionics kind of last if you're doing a full up deal because you're going to be spending so much time on the rest of it so next episode to that end uh next episode what we're going to probably do is be taking i shouldn't say next episode next couple episodes we're going to get some folks over and we're going to take the engine off the firewall not the engine off the engine mount we're going to take pretty much everything firewall forward off the reason we're doing that is it'll be sure then now the aircraft will be shorter it'll, it'll work in the shop easier and we're going to reduce the fuselage to basically a big aluminum box so that it will be easier to repair we're going to have to build a fixture to get those upper skins done so that's kind of our plan there landing gear will come out those will be uh clean blasted um we'll do magnetic particle inspection on them we'll put the replacement wheels and brakes get rid of the old goodyear wheels and brakes um 
nose gear and all that will come off because we'll have firewall forward off we'll be able to take the nose gear and all of that assembly off completely strip it down get it all clean and it will also allow us to inspect the whole enchilada too so that works out pretty well and then the nose gear will be ready to go back on it will be all ready as its own unit clean bag tagged ready to go fresh paint all that it, we're going to put that on the shelf landing gear will go on the shelf and then when the fuselage is done those parts will just click in it's also our hope that we have a, in a parallel effort uh, as things are solidifying with the instrument panel we'll have an instrument panel blank we know that there's certain things that we will be putting in there vertical speed altimeter air speed uh, turn coordinator. We know those four gauges are going back, so we can at least get that instrument panel to that point. Not knowing where we're going with regards to the primary flight instruments, the uh, horizon, and the directional gyro, we'll leave the panel blank. But we can at least get that kind of headed on down the road, depending on what kind of equipment shows up. The avionics stack and all that, uh, we're going to harvest all of the old radio wiring out of the aircraft. There's a lot there is actually in the belly going to the back of the aircraft from the old 1960s radios, just a lot of weight. That all get ripped out and uh, terminated. Um, we're going to get rid of the old antenna wiring. There's a lot of opportunity for corrosion and then just breakdown of the insulation on the old antenna wiring that's been in there for going on 60 years. So that's going to get rid of that stuff that all going fresh so that we have good antenna wiring uh, something that a lot of folks don't do when they put a new radio in the, your pipeline to the air um, on any radio is the antenna so you got to make sure that you have good connections uh, no corrosion and good antenna wire so that will all be done um, so anyway next episode probably what we're going to do is we'll uh, I've got the horizontal stabilizer off we'll probably bring that over and show you that We've been real busy in the shop. Uh, we just got a commission on a small aircraft. We'll actually probably give you a, you're gonna see some episodes of not the Faux Fighter, but the Faux Fighter will be in the background. So we're gonna be doing that. A uh, lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff going on. If you guys have any questions, comments, please put them down below. Uh, if you feel the need and you're uh, kind to us, uh, definitely throw some money at the GoFundMe. We gotta get that going so we can get uh, headed on out. Let's, um, what's going on today the other stuff is uh is just paint stripping and dirty work so i'll do that off camera i don't think you really enjoy that biggest thing is have a safe flight go out there go fly yourself get out to the airport go have fun hang rats out